Hi, welcome. This is Stacy, Education Program Director here at Golden Artist Colors, and I am honored and excited to share with you our brand new paint line, So Flat Acrylics. We'll walk through a few demonstrations. We'll talk about the paint, how it's different um, than some of our other paint lines, how it performs, and uh, I'll take some questions. Um, but before we get going, I want you to know that we are actually broadcasting on all of our Facebook channels, our Williamsburg Core and Golden channels, as well as YouTube. We'll be taking questions live um, on our Golden channel. If you have questions and you are watching us on one of the other channels, hi Scott Bennett, um, we, will, we will be happy to answer your questions um, if you email them to us at helpatgoldenpaints.com. So, um, I have Scott Bennett, who is one of our materials and application specialists here at Golden. Um, he is one of the members of the team that does a lot of research and helps uh, test this product when we were formulating it. He'll be happy to answer your questions live on Facebook Golden page. Um, and if you send us an email, um, one of the team members will get with you uh, individually. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to look at the comments while we load up here. We have folks from Canada from Michigan, from Portland, Oregon. Portland's beautiful, been there many times. Um, okay, great, so terrific. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I see a question right away about um, gouache, and we'll get to that in this presentation. So I'm um, excited to, to sort of unpack that with you and then see if you have any more questions. All right, Florida, that's my, uh, my home state. <laughs> All right, so let's get going. All right, back to the overhead view. So what is so flat? Um, it was fun when we were trying to name this paint because we went around and around and the reality is um, what so flat is, is a, it's a low viscosity, flowing, leveling, matte paint. Um, and it, it really is extremely matte. So so flat really does describe uh, the paint in two ways, uh, it's leveling, uh, characteristics as well as its sheen. So we'll look at uh, some of that as we move through this and talk about it in detail, but first let's just take a look at this color chart. Um, this is actually a hand-painted color chart and you can see that we have um, several primaries, secondaries, and then some really neat special effects colors here in the line, um, as well as some neutrals. If you see this color chart, this is hand-painted, so if you, as I move this across you can see how matte that is. I'm going to show you this golden sticker a few times in this presentation. This is just a glossy sticker and my lights uh, here in the studio are bouncing off that glossy sticker and you can see that this paint does not do that. This is an incredibly flat and matte paint. Um, so if that's what you're after, this is, this is your bag and there's really nothing between you and that color. It's just luminous. I could, you know, cameras do what they can do. They're, they're a nice read, but in person, this stuff just glows. It's beautiful. Okay, so we'll get into the paint in just a second, but I'm going to go ahead and show you this little board we made um, for our marketers. Um, same thing, you know, we have um, here a fluorescent yellow. Uh, this is uh, what we call our napfall pink, cadmium deep, black, uh, cerulean blue hue, and this is a permanent yellow deep. And again, I just, I, I brought this so I could just show you that sheen. I think that, you know, when I do a demo and you see wet, wet paint, what you're going to see is so different from what is um, the finished product when it's dry. So I made some dry samples as well. Okay, so it is a lovely, lovely matte paint. Again, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us at help at goldenpaints.com. Okay, so let's see where this fits in the rest of our paint lines. Um, this is ultramarine blue, and ultramarine blue, uh, this is our heavy body. As you can see, it's nice and thick, you know, it retains those brush strokes. Um, this is our fluid, it levels a little bit more. You can see the shine of that a little bit. There's a bit of a gloss to it, even though ultramarine pigment tends to be on the matter side, um, you can see that because of the acrylic binder, it's got a little bit of a gloss to it. Um, this is our open. And this is our high flow, which is our ink-like, an open, dry, slower, and uh, the, the high flow is our ink-like um, acrylic paint. But then this is so flat. So this is completely different. As you see, I pull this across the light. You see that sheen 
on the other paint lines, you don't have that with the so flat. And then some pigments are actually, the pigment itself is a little glossier. Um, and this is the Naphthol Red Light. And you can see here um, in the heavy body, uh, the fluid, the open, and the high flow, how they're all a bit glossy. You can see that, that, is, uh, that the pigment itself is uh, exaggerating that effect. But then we get over here to the um, so flat is extremely matte. What we do typically with our paints is we don't change the gloss of the paint. Uh, we don't try to create a uniform sheen uh, with our other paint lines. We let the pigment sort of lead that. Uh, but with so flat, we actually were after that matteness. So in this case, we did uh, make the sheen more consistent so that you have that matte finish. So there is a difference there. Whereas our other paint lines, you'll see variation when you look at the label like this ultramarine blue here. This is our heavy body ultramarine blue. Um, the ultramarine blue itself, because of the pigment, is a little bit more matte, whereas if you look at the regular heavy body naphthol red, because that pigment's a bit more glossy, it has a glossy finish. You can really see it when it hits the light. So flat is different. So flat, they will all be matte. Okay, so how matte is it? Well, we actually measured that. So. The cool thing about it is uh, we, we have this lab here at our factory to do tons of testing, and we know that based on that pigment differential, uh, the differences in the pigment sheens themselves, like little stones versus little pieces of glass, um, we have a range in our fluid acrylics of a GU or gloss uh, meter rating between 13 and 100 for fluid acrylics and for heavy body it's between 8 and 99 but for the so flat that GU rating is between 0.4 and 2.8 it is a much tighter range and it is uh, extremely matte so I think that's a pretty cool uh, nerdy fact uh, that we get really excited about here at Golden <laughs> All right, so um, the other thing about it is there's, there's a, a increased opacity over, let's say, our fluid paints. Um, when you look at these on, in the range, uh, when we look at the color chart, and we, we're going to pull some out in just a second, um, you'll notice that we have uh, some colors that no matter what we do, if we are going to retain um, the pigment load that we want as golden, the pigments themselves are extremely transparent. So there's we can increase the opacity, but we're not going to be able to make them opaque without um, you know, changing that pigment. So we, we made the decision that some of these will be less opaque than others. But overall, there is an increased opacity and a, a sort of purity in a, of color and chroma. So um, we have a few down here are fluorescents. Fluorescents are organic, are made from organic dyes. They are not light fast like, like the majority of our other paints, um, but you will get them to fluoresce. So you'll have a matte surface that actually will glow in the dark and fluoresce with a black light. Um, so that's really uh, terrific. You will know that those are, because they're dyes, a bit more transparent than everything else on this palette. So the fluorescent colors are going to be an increased opacity over our other fluorescents, but they will still be a semi-transparent paint. Then the other lines will be either semi-opaque or opaque. So we'll paint that out to show you as well. So I'm going to pause here before I start painting and just look at the comments. Hi, Wyoming. Okay, you cannot wait to try. Let me tell you, I have enjoyed it so much. Um, great, we have questions about the gouache, and I will get to that, I promise you. Um, let's see. Terrific. Thank you, Stacy at Golden, for answering some questions. Um, so there's some compatibility questions, and we will actually do a longer segment just on mixing. Um, with so flat later in the month but they are compatible with our other acrylics it'll just change your sheen um, there's a few there's a few uh, products that will not change the sheen uh, that we recommend and one of them I'll demonstrate today if you want to extend your paint or create transparent layers while retaining some of that matteness I recommend or we all recommend the super matte medium for that and uh, there are some others as well we have a tech sheet on our website that, can, that does identify which mediums and paste uh, you can work with to not change the matteness. But if you're not concerned with that and you just want it on your palette, 
um, you can mix it with our other products. It is compatible. Okay, let's start. All right, this is the fun part. We get to crack these open. So let's, let's, okay. So they come in three sizes right now. The first size is the two ounce. We have a lot of folks that have been using gouache that will really appreciate this product um, or acrylic products that are designed to take the place of gouache. Um, we know that some people will prefer the smaller size because they're working on smaller surfaces. Yet we will have artists that will want to use this at a very large scale um, and it's completely fine for that too. It is a flexible uh, acrylic paint and meets all the standards of our other acrylic paints. Um, I, you know, we can, we can work on a gigantic canvas or a panel or, or plexiglass, all the things that our acrylics normally adhere to, this will adhere to. And it works great on paper. Um, and if we have time, I'll do a quick paint out on paper as well. So acrylic, paints that are called acrylic gouache are acrylics that are very matte or sometimes not so matte, but sometimes matte, and they are designed to sort of be a more, a more uh, permanent replacement for a gouache. So imagine you're squeezing it out from a tube and you're letting it down with water. Um, this can be used in that way, um, but it also can be used um, in many other applications, and its leveling qualities kind of skips that step of having to add so much water and gives you, in my experience, it gives you more pigment um, as you spread that across the surface. So imagine I'm not having to let all that down with water to get it to flow. However, I can if I want to, but uh, I can get that coverage and that kind of uh, silkiness without having to add the water. So I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so yeah, so these are the three sizes we have currently um, going into the marketplace. So these will be available in stores soon. Um, some retailers are taking pre-orders, so just be aware of that. Um, and this is kind of a preview. Okay, so first thing I want to show you is some paint. Let's have some fun here. Okay, so the first color I'm going to show you is the fluorescent yellow. That is the semi-transparent -trans color. Um, it is gorgeous, and uh, I wanted to paint this out so you could see um, what the translucent paints will look like versus the opaque paints. And I have a dry sample of this, so you can really see the difference from wet to dry, which is important to note. Um, so you can see our hand-painted labels. That's, we're going to continue that for this paint line as well. Um, so you, when you're at the store, you'll really get a sense of what they look like when the, the person in our factory bears down with the brush. You'll see the thin coating, and then on the edge, you'll see the thicker coating. You'll notice that the thicker coating gets more opaque, and the, you know, where you bear down, you have a thinner coating, so it's less opaque. So here we go, look at this. So when I pull this out, the viscosity, we call it low viscosity because it's not super thick, but if you're used to painting with our fluids, you'll notice that it feels thicker. It has a kind of uh, feel almost like um, nail polish or uh, if you're an oil painter, you have experience with oil paint, it feels like oils that oil paint that's been let down with some linseed oil, it's creamy. It kind of resists the brush a little bit. Um, the leveling properties, uh, if you're on a surface like this one, which is gessoed and not extremely absorbent, um, if you have fine brush strokes, like not something with big peaks, but you've sort of coated it, those little brush strokes will level out and go away. Um, if you have big ridges in your paint strokes, those, those brush strokes, you will see those. Um, but they will level down, they won't be as evident. So as I move this across, you can see that with the dye-based fluorescence, I am gonna have some transparency. So ways around that, work over a white surface um, and just put the thin coating down and you're good to go. So you can paint the areas you want white or you can put several coats. You don't wanna pour this on, uh, you can put it on a little thicker by raking the brush at more of a horizontal angle, but you don't want to pour it on because it's uh, you're, you decrease some of that flexibility when you do that, and you know there is the potential if it's too thick and poured on that you could get some cracking as it dries. You want to put it on in layers, not you know just piling it on. 
Okay, so that's the fluorescent yellow. Let's see if there's any quick questions. It's like gouache opaque, but permanent. I like it. Yes. So, you know, this meets all of our golden standards. This is, uh, it's our, as they are, they are not water sensitive. So um, it's not going to be like some of the gouaches that are out there, like a traditional gouache for sure. And then some acrylic gouaches will say that they're water sensitive. These are not. If you let them down with a lot of water, then they could become a little bit more water sensitive. Okay, next color is permanent yellow deep, which is a um, which is a semi-opaque color. So you can actually, I, let me close this back up for a second. Semi-opaque. So it's the the little shade on the window is half drawn. That's how you can remember. Um, one thing I didn't mention was that you want to stir these paints. I did that before the event um, because they have so many matting solids and pigments in them. You want to make sure you stir them. The other thing we've been doing is just kind of shaking the container. It's fine. It doesn't get a bunch of air bubbles like some of the other paints might if you do that. So you can shake it or you can stir it. Okay, so here is what a semi-opaque color looks like going down. Um, this is again permanent yellow deep. Just absolutely beautiful coverage. Now I'm going over that black line and I'm, I'm really pushing on my brush and you can see why we call it semi-opaque because you can, there's a lot of haze, you can still see through it a little bit. But with the semi-opaque colors, if I give it a little bit more paint and just sort of gently move the brush across the surface and not bear down as much, I'll get a lot more coverage off the bat. I can also put a second coating on if I wanted to. Sometimes you want transparency. And I'll show you some, uh, like a glaze with this stuff using the super matte medium in a minute. So that is the um, permanent yellow deep, a fabulous color. <laughs> Next, we're going to look at a true opaque. This is red oxide. This color is a fan favorite around here. We just were blown away. Um, its coverage is just so warm and beautiful. You put it on, it has this sort of earthy glow. I mean, it's hard to get excited about a brown, but this is just so pretty and um, just dries so incredibly flat. The black too, there's so many of these colors are just so incredible right out of the container, requiring almost no work. Almost a little too easy, right? There we go, look at that. Okay, so these are the colors wet. Now let me show you what they look like dry. Here's wet, just like any other paint, right? Shiny. All right, so here's a panel I did dry. Um, so this is going to retain that translucency like I mentioned it's best to work over white but they glow in the dark <laughs> which is just great and this is a semi-opaque and this is really bearing down almost a dry brush um, and then this is that red oxide so if I move that against the light you can see absolutely no sheen okay and just to make that point clear let me grab that oops, sorry grab that sticker again and hold this up look at that see no sheen absolutely beautiful so if you want matte this is going to be your new best friend. Okay, <laughs> next demo. And then I'll take questions again. I'll pause. And at the end, I'll go through the, the chat. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you very quickly here is um, just some tints. You know, on the color chart, there are several dark colors, and I feel like a lot of times they get a bad rap because you can't tell what they do. So here we have uh, three that I'm going to swatch out for you in a tint. And one color that I, I really feel like if you're going to work with this line, you will want to have the titanium white and a really dark color so that you can make tints and shades with all of these other uh, wonderful pigments. Um, so the white uh, really creates some beautiful tints. So I'm going to tint the thalo green blue shade. I'm also going to tint the Payne's gray so you can see a nice pretty cool gray. And I'm going to tint the dioxazine uh, violet deep, another uh, beautiful violet that can be used actually as a black replacement. So let's go ahead and do that. Here they are, they line them up. Payne's gray, diox violet, and thalo blue green shade. So hopefully you are enjoying this. I, I know I am, right? <laughs> this is such a pleasure. We were all very excited about this paint. It's really different. Um, it's, it's, it's not like anything else we have um, in our 
toolbox over here at Golden, so it's a lot of fun to try something completely new. All right, so here is the phthalo green, blue shade, nice dark green. So those the person from Portland, Oregon, this would be a color I would see in those beautiful forests between you and the sea. Those beautiful waterfalls and wet, uh, what is it, rainforest. Just gorgeous. And the diox purple, okay, violet. There we go. So now I'm just going to put some white out on my palette. The titanium white, and I'm going to pull these down and just do a quick blend. So if you do like to blend, and you're working with these mats, and you have a large area, and you feel like you need more drying time, but you don't want to lose the matteness, we, we um, recommend you use a little bit of retarder, and that is on the tech sheet. And if you use that to um, slow down the drying time of these paints, you will not lose the matteness, which was a pretty cool discovery. All right, so here's the phthalo green blue shade. It's really dark, isn't it? And on the camera, I'd say it's even darker. Now I'm gonna pull through with a dirty brush just the, into that titanium white so you can see what a gorgeous tint this makes. Now I've just opened up a whole new realm of possibilities with that color. Imagine mixing in some yellow, imagine neutralizing it a little bit with a, a red violet. It's got so much potential, a gorgeous color. So next, we're gonna do the same thing with this Payne's Gray. This is one of my favorites. It's, a, it's almost darker than that black because of that blue in the color. It creates a, it makes it recede um, a little bit. And look what a pretty dry brush effect that is with that, those matting solids just piling up against that gesso, so pretty. So let me go ahead and pull this through the white. You'll see that I get a really nice cool gray. Just absolutely lovely cool gray. The black is beautiful too. It's dead flat. But if you want something to recede a little more, you can go with a Payne's Gray because it has that little bit of blue in it. Okay, last but not least, the Dioxazine Violet Deep. This is, you know, deep purple. Look at that. So pretty. And on the camera, it's, I'll do some dry brush over here as well. You can see that purple in there. It's really gorgeous. Now watch when it hits this white. Wow. So nice. <laughs> There we go. Beautiful. Another black replacement or a dark color that you can use uh, in your palette for range. Absolutely wonderful. Now again, <laughs> those are wet, so they look really different. Um, if I notice I have some brush strokes in here, okay, they look like little ridges. You can see it in the light. Now I'm going to show you what this looks like dry. So here is the dry sample. You see the brush strokes, some of them where I had big ridges, they're still there, but they're so hard to see because of the flatness of this paint. It's just so matte. Okay. Great. I'm going to show you a few more color samples. We do have a lot of um, secondary colors in the, in the palette. Um, so I painted a few of these out on Instagram the other day, and I just wanted to share that with you. Um, they're absolutely vibrant, beautiful colors, and they're great mixers too. Um, so they, you know, something like this would be a wonderful light to have in the palette as a secondary mixer. Um, you know, this is our permanent green. This is the uh, light green. Um, this is the the turquoise, uh, cobalt turquoise, or teal. I'm calling it. Yes, it's cobalt teal. Sorry, and the turquoise is darker. This is that phthalo I just painted out, and this is cadmium, uh, orange, and so on. So uh, just a little fun there. Okay, so as I close these, we're going to look at mediums in a minute. So before I do that, I'm going to quickly pop on here and check some questions. Okay. So your colors stay vibrant. You don't lose any chroma. Um, they're pretty high. They're pretty intense. Um, you know, as things dry, they always shift a little bit. Um, so you will see some color shift, but I mean, they're very high chroma. <laughs> you can see on here, they're, they're, they're pretty intense. Um, we tried to put as much pigment as we could in here um, and maintain that 
objective of keeping a matte sheen um, and that leveling quality so that it's loaded with pigment um, so it should should be pretty true okay are these available now uh, many retailers are actually taking pre-orders they're shipping out now so uh, I think that depends on your local retailer when they actually get it in the store um, and I think online some some retailers are taking pre-orders Thank you, Stacy, for posting the text sheet. I think that will really help answer a lot of questions. Um, about varnishing, there's some stuff on the text sheet, and there's an article coming out shortly where Stacy, actually, who's on this call, um, or on this Facebook uh, event, um, has written about. So um, I'm sure she'll be happy to chime in where she can. Um, these products will be available internationally. Um, so. It just depends on when the retailers receive, you know, actually get that in the store. Okay, terrific. I'll keep going through these as we move on, and I do have helpers on the on the Golden Facebook channel answering those questions. And don't forget, if we don't get to you, you can always email us at help at goldenpaints.com. We are happy to answer your questions. Okay, let's talk very quickly about extending the paint with medium. Um, I'm going to show you a glaze actually with this so you can see what that looks like a uh, translucent quote-unquote layer um, with a white over black and a ultramarine over this yellow there we go ultramarine blue right here um, if you want to extend this paint we recommend the super matte medium so we'll go ahead and use that here now um, I will basically put the color down uh, full chroma without anything in it just pull it down and then I will put some super matte over here and just show you what it looks like when you let this paint down because I one of the the things that uh, will happen when you're painting is you'll decide that there's some areas where I want some transparency even though this is an opaque paint or leaning towards opacity I should say increased opacity I may want some some uh, passages that are more textural or more translucent and uh, I'm going to just show you what that looks like with all these matting solids and um, with this particular paint, so you you know. Um, also, one thing to know with um, so flat is that if you're going to build up with many 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 layers, um, at some point you might see um, a reduction in matteness where you might have to sort of reset a little bit, put a layer in um, of something that's not so matte and then go back over again. Um, it's just, imagine like sandpaper surface, it's all these little teeny particulates on the surface and every time you put more on there, you know, that, that binder kind of rises up. So anytime you're building up layers and layers of matte, um, you know, it's, it's a potential. So if I have a painting, um, which I'm going to show you in a moment, with a lot of impasto areas very thickly built underneath, if that last layer is so flat, you'll have all that matteness and those layers um, that uh, will work well together. So, All right, so this is the super matte medium. It dries. Uh, it has a lot of matting solids in it, so I wouldn't say it dries perfectly clear, um, but it's very translucent, and for most people, they would call it clear. Um, the whiteness of this um, in a very thin layer, you, you probably wouldn't even notice the haze um, of the matting solids, but, um, you know, if you put a few layers on, you might start to notice that it's not crystal clear. It's translucent. Um, if I pull it down like this, that you start to see um, that the there's a little whiteness in this product, even when it's pulled down like that. Most of that whiteness is the binder and will ev clarify as it evaporates but there will be some haziness retained. So here's the white. If I pull the white down, it's so creamy. Feels so nice on the knife. <laughs> uh, with So Flat, you can put it on um, in generous painted on layers or like I'm doing here with the knife, but you don't want to pour it on. Um, it's just, it doesn't do as well when it's super thick. It's meant to be put on in, you know, layers like, like this, not poured on. Um, you might, it may not perform as well if you start putting it on, pouring it on. Like I mentioned before, it could crack. Um, craze, you know, kind of like, I think that's a, maybe a better word. Uh, so as I pull this out, you can see that because of those matting solids, I have a lot of 
haze to my glaze. How about that? Haze to my glaze. <laughs> but I can pull this out and create some interesting textures in my work using transparencies with my opaque paint if I wanted to, and those will dry matte and lovely. Okay, so the super matte medium could be one of your, your tools when working with this paint. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. This is the ultramarine blue. Look at that Yves Klein kind of glow. It's just gorgeous. I love our ultra blue. And here's the super matte medium. I'm gonna pull that over, do a little blending. So again, the whiteness will uh, disappear, but you will retain a little bit of haziness. And my one uh, regret is that I don't have a dry sample of this, but um, after I take questions, I'll pull it back and maybe some of this will start to set up. It's pretty, the heater's on, it might do that quickly. Okay, so there we go, working with some transparencies uh, using the super matte medium. I could use water a little bit, um, but after a point, the water is less effective and will make the, the, the paint um, have a little bit more of a sensitivity to uh, water. So I, if you use this, you know that your binder is still going to be nice and strong and all those pigments are going to be locked down to your surface. Okay. Terrific. So I have uh, one more thing to show you and then I'll hop on and answer questions. This is what I was talking about. Um, if I were trying to get texture like this and work very thickly um, with so flat, like with a, this kind of matte sheen, it would be best for me to build my layers with other acrylic products underneath. Um, this is actually a canvas. Um, this, this product works well on anything acrylic would adhere to. So paper, canvas, um, plexiglass, any of that. Um, this is a canvas prepared with gloss medium and the core light dimensional ground um, put on a text put on with a texture um, and then I took the so flat uh, cerulean blue hue and painted over it so I have this super flatness with the heavy texture I didn't have to do all that with so flat you, you know on our text sheet that Stacy posted in the golden Facebook um, page which you can also find on our golden website uh, under our so flat section there's a list of gels and pastes that you can mix actually with so flat and you can retain that matteness as well if you want to work thickly um, so there is that option even though this paint on its own was designed to level and be flat you can get texture there are ways to get that Okay, finally, last but not least, sorry about the noise. For my folks that work on paper, I'm just going to very quickly do a, uh, just a little swatch out on watercolor paper, um, just to show you, and then I'll answer questions and we'll be done with our intro to sew flats. So I'm gonna use that cerulean blue hue that I had on that last panel and just show you um, the difference so paper is extremely absorbent so you can see how I pull that across and it just you know I'm gonna have to keep loading it on I can let that down with the tiniest bit of water and this is what that looks like all will dry matte I can also let that down with the super matte medium that I just showed you on the last demo so this will work on paper. What you do need to know about working on paper is that paper is extremely absorbent and your uh, water in your paint is going to get sucked down into that paper very quickly. Um, and if you keep working that surface, you might see a little bit more of the brush stroke um, on this than you might if you were on, say, a prepared panel. Um, but again, for those folks that are used to working in gouache, you are good to go. Um, this is a beautiful paint for the surface as well. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to go ahead and go through some questions here, um, and then I'll flip back to the camera and say good, good afternoon and goodbye. Let's see. So um, the volume of that weed jar is two ounces, <laughs> two fluid ounces. The volume of the middle-sized jar is four, and the volume of the 
larger is 16, okay? <laughs> Great question. And the red oxide is, a, is gorgeous. Can you talk about this product and pouring application? So it is compatible with our other products, but the other products will change the sheen. So if you use our matte pouring medium, it'll look more like the matte pouring medium sheen. Um, if you use a gloss pouring medium, it will increase the gloss of this paint. So if you really want it to look dead flat like this, um, you know, you just have to choose the mediums that will not change the sheen. And those are on the tech sheet. Okay. But it is compatible. So if you're okay with changing the sheen and it's just another tool in your toolbox and you want to use it with other things, you're good to go. Yes, they do dry kind of like a gouache. I will say that they they might dry with, in some cases, with a more intense chroma um, because sometimes, not all colors, but sometimes colors in gouache tend to white out. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, they're that, they're super matte. Yes, absolutely. You work with squeegees. I do too. Pulling the paint that I've mixed with color pouring medium matte and gloss. You said not to pour this, but if you mix it with a medium, see that's different. So you, I think you can experiment with that. Just know that you're going to change the sheen. Um, yeah, so that's a great answer. You've got that already. Oh, I love all these questions. Thank you, everybody. Um, yes, all pigments do have pigment ID numbers, and you can check that out. Okay, let's see. A few more questions. Let me scroll through. You guys have been busy while I was talking. This is so good. <laughs> okay, March can't come fast enough. Let me tell you, I, I'm excited to get... I have right now the testing, the set we use to test. I can't wait to get the real thing, too. Um, in my studio. <laughs> Jolden has jumped on the matte acrylic gouache bandwagon. Well, this is a little, it's different though. It's, it's, uh, it's, I don't know how to explain this, but this is, this is leveling. This is, uh, um, you know, gouache comes out of a tube kind of thick and you let it down with water and it has a, a certain feel. This feels nothing like that. Although you can still get a similar effect and work with it. Um, like gouache if you wanted to it's it's a different paint it's the coverage is luxurious feeling it's like I said I in my experience what it feels like is like um, the viscosity of a, maybe a nail polish or um, you know like oil paint that's been let down with oil it's just it feels completely different um, than any of our other other paint lines and it is very very matte um, so let's see. Um, let's see where we are. Okay, so anyway, um, I'm a dot artist. Anyone else here do dot with black? I think this would be amazing. You know, later in the month, we're going to talk about using this in um, refillable pens and markers. Uh, you can also airbrush with this paint. Um, we have formulas for that on our tech sheet. Um, it is a, it's, it's a fine acrylic paint. It's a you know, professional paint. So there's, there's a, a lot that you can do with it. I, I wouldn't say, um, I'm going to keep some mixtures wet for a few days, stay on a palette, uh, get soupy. Ooh, good question. I'd have to check uh, palette management with this. I usually use it all up. Okay, so this is terrific. Um, thank you for all the questions. I'm going to run back to the overhead, I mean the front camera. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Again, if there's anything you, you would like to know, you have any more questions, um, just email our team at helpatgoldenpaints.com. This is a brand new product. Um, we're excited to talk about it. By all means, um, reach out and uh, ask us questions um, at helpatgoldenpaints.com and we'll be happy to answer. And I just saw one pop up. Do we have teal? Yes, we do. We have cobalt teal. <laughs> all right, take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.